guys were going into testing, testing, one, two, testing, one, two. Well, welcome everyone to Supreme Decision, and welcome to the Supreme Decision Living Minute Podcast. Well, it's been a minute, back a little more than a month, since the last time you guys have had an opportunity to hear from me. One of the things that I've been doing is kind of building, like I told you guys before, I'm looking to end this year on such a religion course for recognizing our defense when we're going into these legal battles, because that's what they are, to where we're able to not only function, but we're fear. Not simply because of the repercussions that come with it, but it's the allowing and the acceptance of following through with consequences. So, one of the things that came across that I've been working on, again, for a little more than a month, was the Minnesota Police Department. You know, those that killed a young man because the young lady didn't think her gun was a taser or thought her gun was a taser, or the Derek Chauvin where he violated not only department policy, but human policy for the most part, and holding someone in a chokehold for the most part for more than eight minutes, and then lying about it, even though it was on video. Then even after he's convicted, we have three other officers trying to circumvent blame in which they're seen, again, on video. And they're, what's seen on the video is not matching what they're writing in their police. Now, the reason why this struck me was not because of that. Because this is something that's in addition to that. And those that see me, you can actually see that I'm outside. And where I'm at is right next to some bushes of all places. But I'm reading the Minnesota Reform. And it has a headline. Some Minneapolis police department officials leave with a trail of lawsuits complaints while pocketing six-figure settlements. What are they talking about? Because one of the things I talk about constantly is the simple fact that what we are taught is not what we are experiencing. We're taught that a police officer is a good person, is a good guy. I told you, I've shown you, I've even had other people inform you of the challenges that they've gone through, that they've witnessed, and that they're, I guess you would say, experienced with police officers. But check this out. Minneapolis is paying more than $875,000 per month and disability pension to 169 former officers. Now, even after Dustin Dupree was arrested in 2003 for assaulting his ex-wife, he kept his job as a Minnesota police officer. I'm going to say this again. Dustin Dupree was arrested for assaulting his ex-wife. We did talk about the fact that police officers have the highest domestic violence rate in the country. This was at a level of, this wasn't even the person he was dealing with anymore. It was a former wife. He was able to keep his job even though he was arrested for assaulting her. He was then charged with puncturing a woman's tire outside of a Target in 2017 in a fit of 
road rage. It's the number two. He then continued through six more misconduct complaints that we know of. 2003, domestic violence of a former partner. All the way up to 2017, where in a fit of road rage, he punctured the woman's tire. He then goes through six more misconduct complaints. These are not even complaints that come from civilians. These are department complaints. And even after being fired in 2019, he got his job back with the help of, you know, those people that I spoke about, the police union, the ones that are making sure they are trained attack dogs are continuing to attack and not have to face consequences and not have to get mental evaluation or mental health check. Not me, this is actually in their report. None of that ended his career until last year. When after 23 years, he left the department with a $175,000 workman's compensation settlement from the city. Say that one more time. He had a total of eight known complaints that were for misconduct, domestic violence, and road rage. He was able to walk away with $175,000. Dupree is one of 139 Minneapolis police officers with misconduct complaints out of 144 who have received workman compensation settlement since George Floyd was killed. George Floyd was killed in 2020. It is July or June 2022. A little more than two years. A little more than 24 months. 139 police officers had misconduct complaints out of 144. I thought it was a small number. That's damn near 98%. 98% of people that are collecting checks from the state have federal lawsuits against them or misconduct complaints from this one. 139 out of 144 in less than two years. And they're getting six figure settlements on their way out. Let's just, let's, 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 just, let's just catch this for a moment. Because here's the thing. We're all in the middle of this inflated gas crisis. We're all on the back end of the COVID epidemic. We're all sitting there and we're really through all the mishaps. George Floyd's murder caused Minnesota $22.2 million. Oh, excuse me, since his murder. Because $22.2 million thus far has gone to police officers. Employees who retired early due to disability can get paid 6 of their salary tax-free until age 55. The state is paying out more than $875,000 in these pensions to 169 Minnesota police officers who retired since Floyd's murder. Eight of these officers sought disability pensions due to post traumatic stress syndrome. 96% of these Minnesota cops have received workman cop settlement, had misconduct complaints filed against them.
96 percent of the cops that were leaving had misconduct complaints filed against them. 96 percent of the cops that had workman cop settlement. 96 percent. 96 percent. Again, it's just it's just a few bad apples. Yes, I pause for dramatic effect because I want you to understand if it's just a few, how is it 96% of the people that are retiring have complaints against them at that point? Because I talk about this often whenever you're suing an officer in their personal or individual capacity. One of the things that you run upon is the fact that they will try to say, oh, I have PTSD. Because you're the cause of the PTSD. You're called because you're trained to escalate situations. You're trained to pull your gun out. You're trained that everyone's out to hurt you. You're trained. Give you an example. I have a friend of mine. We were sitting down and we went to a party. We're sitting down at a party, and it's not very big, probably about 20, 25 people there. But off to the side is one guy. Everybody's looking at why, why is he sitting over there? Not really bad. It's not important. We're going to do our thing. He does his thing. Whatever. So he grabs the phone, he's looking at his phone. Couple guys walk over to him like, "Hey, what's going on with you?" Who like, "Well, no, you know, I want to make sure that everybody's covered." That covered everybody here is family. What are you covering? Well, you never know what's going to happen. I like to tell your cop. He goes, "Yeah." He said, "Why are you surprised?" I said to him. Why is it that you are on such a high guard with your family member? Understanding. He was not able to relax. And he could not sit still and just enjoy himself because he's been trained that everyone is a potential suspect and everyone is trying to hurt him. He's not having the opportunity to deal with any mental anxiety that he may have. He doesn't have any opportunity to release the negative. Because, again, when I gave that conversation about the, um, the law of energy, can't be created nor destroyed. And any change to that, it can be transferred from one place to another, but the change would have to come from an outside source. We are the greatest conductors of energy. And a police officer goes from one negative situation to the next negative situation to the next negative And they're not able to dispel any of that negative energy. So then the buildup is coming in through the training. Now you're going home and you can't even talk about it. So now it explodes on your better half. Because a lot of people don't even think about that. But even when you're looking at this situation, you had a young man, Justin Dupree. He had a road rage incident against a perfect stranger. He had an incident where he assaulted his ex-wife, someone that's not even in his house. You have a hundred and thirty-nine officers with not only civilian claims, but department complaints against him. 52 officers with pending complaints left the city and began working somewhere else. Now, keep that in mind. 52 compared to 16. 52 in one year compared to 16 in 2020. And 4 in 2019. What happened? 
Oh, I distinctly remember 2020 while in Houston. I had a podcast that has since been deleted. I had a quick show that was on YouTube that has also been removed where I spoke about the train attack zone. There were sections of the country who was not allowed to do any policing from four months to up to as many as nine months. I stated 2021 will be violent. And they didn't disappoint. The average number of police shootings up until 2020, the five years up until 2020 was 318. The number in 2021 was 1,055. Say that one more time. Police shootings average 318 per year. 2021, when they were finally allowed to go back to the shooting for the most part, was the most violent year in policing history. 1,055 police shootings. I asked the question four in 2019, 16 in 2020, 52 in 2021. What changed? 96% of those that were leaving, those that were retiring, those that were getting disabilities, those that were looking for work have come. 96% had department complaints against them. Keep that in mind. Not just civilians, but department. They weren't following policing orders and policy. But they are the ones that are asking us to respect them and to comply when they're not following their own instructions. Here's one. Tyrone B A R B E has a 12 year Minnesota Police Department career. He racked up six losses that cost the city more than $344,000. Here's what is the question I'm asking. 12, excuse me, 12 years, six misconduct and federal losses. He lost this, and it cost the city. $344,000. 2014, Barnes was caught on video tackling a man who had been collecting signatures for voting. Gray threatened to shoot them when they tried to intervene. Now, I'm going to back up a little bit. We know from the Kim Porter trial that officers have a duty. Minnesota police department policy to intervene. We also know from the George Floyd incident that there is a law that allows for civilian intervention in an unlawful arrest. Gray threatened to shoot them when they tried to intervene. He tackled a man who wasn't resistant and who was not committing a crime. He was a school resource officer. He was still choking an 18-year-old disabled student. The chuckle was this. This man who 
prior to becoming a Minnesota police officer. Was a school resource officer who had been sued for choking a 19 year old disabled child so he lost consciousness and when he refused to stand up to be searched, Graves continued to assault him. Student won $140,000. Graves then was also sued for punching a Maple Grove woman in the face, knocking her unconscious when she tried to record him with her cell phone as he responded to a dispute over a cab fare. He lost that one. $82,000. He was also sued for pepper spraying a general manager of an uptown bar while working off duty. That cost him more than $34,000. He had another lawsuit for beating a man unconscious outside a Dinkson Town bar. $62,000. Twelve years, six lawsuits, seventeen misconduct complaints. Notice what I'm saying, misconduct. I am not talking about the lawsuit. These are departmental complaints. The Minnesota Police Department had seventeen. Ask your question. Where is it that you can go? that you can screw up 17 times and keep your job. When you have multiple instances of violent acts, why are they keeping them on? These are actual little crickets y'all are hearing. But I want you to understand something because that's a, that's a very good question. What makes it one of those things that Make you go, hmm. I'm reading off in 12 years. Filing act after 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 filing act. Misconduct after misconduct after misconduct after misconduct. Settlement after settlement after settlement after settlement. Bizarre walks off with a $55,000 a year pension and a $195,000 workman comp settlement. Guess for what? Post-traumatic stress syndrome. Now, do you understand why when I call them trained attack dogs? Why I say the union don't give a shit about you? This is the absolute proof of it. Because the union kept raising in a job. The union kept Dupree in a job. The union kept filing act after filing act after filing act with the job. And then he said, you know what? I'm not done unleashing this violence on the city. In the midst of inflation, in the midst of a housing crisis, in the midst of all of this, I'm going to make you pay for my mistake. Every time the city gets sued, guess what? Prices go up. Goods go up. Taxation goes up. Who suffers from it? I'm not sure if you guys remember Terrence Franklin. Andrew Fender was one of the five SWAT officers who shot Terrence Franklin ten times in a basement of an uptown home in 2003. Grand jury decided not to indict the officer, but the video obtained by time raised new questions about the police officer's version of what happened. How is that always the case? The police officer's version of what happened in the George Floyd incident was 
different. The police officer's incident and the Kim Porter situation was different. Amy Geiger's was different. I, Muhammad Khalid was different. Eddie T. Johnson was different. I can just go through literal thousands of police officer statements that were different from the video. Why is that? Would it be the stop language that I speak about? Would I would it be the fact that they're trained not to do the right thing? They're trained like Trevor Noah said to create crime for a quota. Cinder, after the video showed that Cinder lied in his report, he was also accused of harassing and fell off over the course of four years while working in the K-9 unit, where he was the supervisor. They paid her $225,000. And give me something else. Fender, who sexually harassed Edwards, who lied about the shooting of Terrence Franklin, had 23 misconduct complaints. He received $195,000 in work in the comp. He's going to receive, after February, $128,000 per year in a disability pension. 23 complaints. How is he still a police officer? Train the tag dog. Who is the union acting for? How are they even helping the police officer? Alexander Brown and another officer point. They handcuffed an Native American man in the face, breaking his nose and possibly causing traumatic brain injury. The officer also put a spindle on his head and then the MT injected him with ketamine. Doctors had to incubate the man to keep him breathing. Brown was fired. He then sued the city claiming it agreed to rehire him and then backed out the deal. He got his job back. He won $175,000 in workman's comp. He's getting more than $46,000 a year in retirement benefits. $46,000 guaranteed. That is higher than the average person. Or not doing his job properly. And not because he was fired without just cause. He got paid because they said they were going to rehire him and didn't. Then they gave him money. Then they gave him his job back. He then retired with a full after doing his job wrong. How's the union help? Because I, I look at them and I talk about them and I hate speaking in some of these things because it's such a negative thing. But many of the people that hear me is not sweet. Because many of the people that listen, I'm not changing your mind. I'm not even expanding your mind in these conversations. All I'm doing is adjusting your sight. 
these are things that I'm using for justification for the things that I say. Because it makes it easier for you then to go back and watch the video. Makes it easier then for you to go back and hear me on another podcast. Because when I give you these facts, you can now go back to what I said, where I'm getting these numbers from, where I'm talking about these individuals. You can do your independent research on this. The city was sued when Craig Taylor was accused of hitting a bystander while executing a search warrant. He hit a man so hard that he lost control of his foul. The city paid more than a half a million dollars in a federal law. Taylor received $175,000, also receiving $73,000 per year in disability. Sherry Appleton was accused of stomping on a man's back, kicking him a dozen times, and using a taser while apprehending a car break-in suspect. Notice that the person she's doing this to is not the car breaking suspect. The city settled with the man for $125,000. Appleton had a lengthy complaint file and received $160,000 in her settlement. Thomas Pearson was accused of punching a man so hard he suffered concussion. He was convicted of a misdemeanor fifth degree assault. They suspended him. He kept his state license and his job. He received $175,000 in a workman's comp settlement. I'm reading officer after officer after officer after officer. As the officer who was committing a violent act, who the police union is making sure they're continuing to work. And then when they're good and ready to stop working, they're making sure, the police union is making sure these officers continue to put pain and suffering on the citizens by doing it financially. With six figure settlement, allowing them to keep their license, allowing them to keep their job, allowing them to go from department to department with not one, not two, but as you see, as many as 23 complaints. If the policing system was actually designed to be good, why would we have a 96%? of bad apples leaving.